welcome to the online prosperity show Welcome to the Online Prosperity Show, and I'm your host, Prosper Tarubing, and today we have a mighty special guest. Ritesh, how are you doing today? Good. Thanks, uh, Prosper. Thanks for having me. Fantastic. And for those that are watching, Ritesh is an Australian property guru and the founder of Nest or Invest Buyers Agents. Now, with over 10 years of experience in the real estate industry, Ritesh has helped numerous home buyers to create wealth through property investment. Now, his passion and expertise, um, you know, lie in his genuine desire to assist others in their property buying journey and he wants to be your trusted advisor but there's more to Ritesh than his professional accomplishments now you see Ritesh has an incredible personal story as well and that's the reason why I actually brought him here not only is he um, you know accomplished in his professional way Ritesh was actually born premature at six months. So at six months, he came screaming into the world and he has overcome all these challenges from a very early age. And, um, you know, he has arrived in Melbourne and he's been here for over 16 years with only $3,000 in his pocket, right? That's usually not even enough for you to get a place to stay or, um, you know, any sort of life for you to get started. But Ritesh, you know, beat the odds and now he's here. Today, he holds an impressive, um, you know, 22 years of work, um, you know, in the experience that he has had and he's completed not only one, not two, not even three, but four postgraduate qualifications. And he's got the fifth one that is currently underway. Now, Ritesh's dedication to education and self-improvement just reflects commitment and being the best at what he does, right? So we're going to delve into Ritesh's expertise, his journey in real estate, and also gain insights to his approach as being a buyer's agent. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it. Now, Ritesh, you've had quite a journey. Tell us a little bit more about your journey um, from arriving in Melbourne with only $3,000 to your name to becoming a successful buyer's agent. Well, uh, it has been a well, uh, immigrant journey with struggles and hardships. Uh, when I came to Australia, Melbourne, 16 years ago, uh, I we had to make maybe one step back uh, just quickly. You know, like, like you correctly said, 22 years ago when I started my career, uh, I was a uh, I had a medical science uh, qualification. Uh, I studied a, a dip advanced diploma in physiotherapy. So I was actually doing two qualifications. Like in the morning, I would go to uh, study bachelor of science. Uh, zoology, botany, chemistry were my core subjects. In the after finishing BSc, I would go to study a uh, advanced diploma in physical therapy, like afternoon classes. So I was doing two qualifications, like during my graduation days, uh, because my grandfather was a doctor. You know, my father kind of you know always wanted like you know one of the like kids to be you know in medical profession. So uh, I was studying physic, studying to be a physical therapist, but. Uh, that college was kind of after I finished the degree, I came to know that the college is not affiliated to you know the local kind of like we have RTO in Australia. It was not the case with that qualification, so I was really heartbroken. And uh, then I said, okay, I have the knowledge, I can still use it. So I moved into uh, becoming a pharmaceutical sales rep. It is why you know in the New Delhi, that is where I was working. So after working for about four and a half, five years, I was kind of like stuck in life. I was like, why am I not progressing? And I used to have those uh, general manager sales, you know, uh, sales directors coming to our sales meetings and, uh, you know, telling them like they have MBA qualification. So that is when, you know, around 96, I, 2006, I resigned and 2007 came to Australia for MBA. 
because like you mentioned you know uh, education is always important uh, you know to progress in life so after quickly finishing i mean mba one and a half years i like during that time i kind of started loving melbourne i said i want to live here permanently and then i started the permanent residency process uh, the migration agent said if i uh, i can apply for permanent residency uh, in accounting profession but for that i had to study like another two semesters so i again went back to uni for two semesters after mba got a graduate diploma in management uh, there was a graduate certificate in business from bu and uh, then there was another one year program called professional year so uh, that actually led to an accounting internship and uh, i applied for pr and that accounting internship got converted into a full time permanent job like while i was working there i mean uh, it was an unpaid internship 3 months but i was i requested like okay uh, i have to pay my bills so can i please work three days like paid job and three days unpaid internship and they were kind enough to agree so and because i have always kind of have this learning attitude you know kind of giving my best in whatever i do you know when i was doing medical science degree i would give my best mba accounting i was like i want to learn this and and i always went there with that positive attitude so um when when i used to finish work as an accounting intern they would say like i would say give me more work this is kind of you know unusual you know if you're not being paid you will just would would like to just sit and you know do nothing but i, I said give me more work and they're like what so in i think half way when in the half months down the internship they said okay we have a permanent full time job for you this is it uh and we won't let you go so i, I was an assistant accountant in that company a uh, snowy mountain engineering corporation smec smec a large global corporation um in the corporate finance uh, but the company got sold uh, sadly like uh, you know after when i was there 2016 and uh, a singapore based company surbana jerong bought smec so there were a lot of redundancies and like you know me including other assistant accountants we were made redundant and i was like as much as i loved the accounting and finance you know became sort of coming from a you know medical science background to becoming kind of like you know loving numbers that two totally different you know north pole and south pole <laughs> so i'm really sometimes even i am surprised you know with the potential of the human brain you know what you can do so but i always loved real estate you know last 10 years i was like buying properties you know left right and center almost every one and a half years i would buy a property um like settle my six property end of last year and you know people would just come to me like but the way like i am is you know i just love helping people kind of that has been you know the motto of my life friends family anyone everyone i would help them i would see and i'm i think i'm sensitive i can sense like you know someone is in need and you know i would always say yeah let me know if i can help you right. uh yeah so that 16 17 years of kind of you know and people just kind of would come to me as well like and it, it it's such a diverse i should say spectrum you know like people come to me for career advice as you may cover at uh, interview techniques i remember helping people with the english like there's a english language test i e l t s at the national english language testing system like i have helped so many friends secure like eight each in ielts seven each in ielts you know, because i just don't know why i just feel like if i have the knowledge and the skill i share it with others and if if it can change their life i think i should continue to do so the simple philosophy i have and you know that the feeling you have and they come back to you like you know thank you rakesh i got seven each in ielts or thank you rakesh i got that job or you know or like for example uh, uh property you know thank you rakesh because of you i was able to buy my first home by, by invest in property or you know now i have you know 300000 equity half a million dollar equity so i think that's priceless <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that 
that is what drives me and yeah so soon after that accounting job i moved into real estate full time worked for about 3 years in the industry uh but again what happened 17 years ago stuck in life i got waking up across the same moment uh so i went back to uni again two and a half, two and a half years ago uh this for i think i actually went to do a phd but uh, i felt like i'm missing the industry so i said look i will exit with the masters by research degree which is still you know to a two years qualification a masters level research where i have to write a 50000 words thesis uh yeah i passed two exams and last exam is due in december where in like i have written about 35000 words already the, the topic of my research is studying the uh, advanced technologies like blockchain ai big data machine learning in australian residential real estate sales transaction management process all right and uh, yeah that is why and it has always been like how can i create value be different and like you know there are you know more than 100000 real estate agents but there are very few buyers agents yeah. and because of my you know 10 years strong experience in helping buyers i sort of you know new that you know that said i if 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 at all you know i have, i do my business it has to be as a buyers agent absolutely and i really appreciate that um um you know response there and i i really value the fact that you are always out there to help others you know if you help other people get what they want uh, i believe you also get that which you want and it's just human nature for um you know helping other people because if you're not helping other people's lives get better then obviously you're wasting your time now i just want to take you back a little bit um you know when you then got to become assistant accountant um but you also doing something in finance there you know during that that sort of uh, period what then inspired you to transition from that accounting field which seemed like you were now you know getting strides um to now start a profession in in real estate i mean like i i'm very philosophical uh i would always reflect in life you know what i am doing why i am doing uh and am i liking this is there something else i can do it just became a habit uh uh like uh, like 22 years ago when i graduated you know after that physiotherapy degree like diploma i like i really couldn't visualize myself sitting in like a one room all my life you know as a physiotherapist uh i really couldn't visualize and it could be that thing and i said no i want to add explore the world and that pharmaceutical sales job was a great choice you know because that made me travel like all across india uh, with different companies and and this job requires like you to travel a lot what happens is we get a list of doctors we get a an area like for example say northern suburbs of melbourne you know i they would give me like lal or thomas town dorian you know maybe 5 or 10 suburbs and around you know say x number of doctors say 100 doctors and i will have to meet like 10 doctors every day so it was very target oriented but i had to travel a lot uh, and meet new people you know try different food so that was you know really exposed me to like different cultures different languages and i think it really helped me build my personality who i am like this is not me like say 23 years ago or as a kid i was very you know kind of average student just uh, able to pass you know the class go to the next grade low confidence i think i was very much uh, kind of bullied i should say you know B- back in those days you know no one knew what a bullying is and in certain countries or cultures it just no one talks about it so like i was born premature so i think i had a uh i guess maybe there was some issue with my speech uh you know there would be certain words i would have difficulty pronouncing like pencil people will hear pencil 
So in the school, they would bully me like, ah, pencil, like typical, you know, school kid story. But coming, so coming out of that, you know, developing that confidence, that pharmaceutical sales job requires you to be very proficient in medical terms. You know, like those medical terminologies, like you know, gynecologists, you know, pediatricians, uh, you know, talking about in their language, like you have to take this medicine, you know, BD twice a day and uh, contraindications, very like difficult terminology. But I said it for three, four years, it was easy for me to talk their language. And with doctors, you know, we had to like talk in English in that, like in India. Uh, so you know, that developed my English, my confidence, you know, that ability to build rapport, uh, kind of, you know, that sort of sales side of things. So, yeah. And uh, that, the thing was with accounting, uh, as much as I loved accounting, I kind of always reflective. Like, okay, I love accounting and finance, but I think I like, I like finance more than accounting. Uh, you know, reconciliations, journal entries and whatnot. And again, you know, because I was like continuously advising people with properties and buying properties, I just felt like more comfortable. Like, and there, again, we going back, you know, like return on time invested. I was like, okay, I work nine to five, you know, 40 hours a week, you know, I get X amount. Again, the reflecting. Is there anything else I can do where I can earn more money? That was you know kind of the thing okay i think real estate sounds like a fair go for the time i invest in the kind of return i can get so that was i think the main reason and plus i always you know kind of read stories you know books talk, listen to you know like i'm very philosophical you know the things i watch uh, i take you know that philosophical message from those stories so uh I was like, I, I, I think I read or heard somewhere that if you are doing something, you know, a job or whatever, and if you don't feel tired at all, even if you're doing like 12 hours or 18 hour days, that is it. That should be your career and that should be your job. And I guess and I said to myself, like real estate is something I never get tired. I never bored. I can talk all day. And, you know, these were some of the factors like, you know, return on time invested and, you know, like love what you do made me kind of transition into real estate. And uh, I always remember my father, you know, very philosophical again. He would say, son, whatever you do, be, be the best. Try to be the, you know, the top kind of in that field, the best in that field. So that, you know, that voice always, you know, runs around in your head and you say to yourself, yep, I have to be the best, the top. And that is why, you know, I went back to uni to study real estate, research in real estate, to have that, be that authority, that, that the thought leader that, you know, I should be, to be that best. And yeah. Absolutely. I, I really love the inspiration that your father would have given you, obviously being the best, um, you know, in whatever endeavors that you uh accomplished there now you went on from being a real estate agent and you took on uh the now current role of being a buyer's agent let us know you know what influenced that uh decision and um i, I know you've been you know progressing and getting tired with certain things but maybe something would have happened would it, would it have been your need to help more people what actually happened for you to now become a buyer's agent i think that's the right word you know helping others uh i, I think I, I just love people around me i love having people like just helping them like three years ago middle of pandemic lockdowns I used to work in a somewhere and uh, but just not the right kind of treatment, like you know, unfair treatment. And I just felt like, and it had happened quite a number of times in my career. And I just said to myself, like, why am I going through all this? Uh, is it really worth it? And that is when I resigned and kind of literally took, like, said, okay, man. Uh, 
time to think, you know, like literally the way I did like 17 years ago, I literally resigned and went back to my parents' house. Same thing I did like three and a half years ago, middle of pandemic lockdown, I resigned. And uh, just uh, then I said, okay, like I had like a portfolio of properties. So I said, okay, let me do one thing. Let me kind of restructure, you know, my finances, uh, sell some of my assets, pay off my owner occupier loan. That would be a big sort of relief. You know, if your home loan is paid off, primary principal place of residence, that's a big relief. You know, anywhere, you know, could be any amount, $2,000, $4,000 per month saved. So that was the first thing I did, paid off my owner occupier property loan. Um, and that is, I was like kind of not panicking that, okay, uh, I don't have to really. And then I knew like, okay, what are my expenses? And, you know, like my wife, had a full-time job and I said, okay, now I think I can go back to uni. Because with one person earning and I'm studying, things would be kind of under control. Uh, and uh, and then uh, in between, I like always had, had this thing, you know, like have being self-employed. So I started to, you know, talk to people like, you know, business brokers, you know, talking to like franchisor, franchisees, you know, gyms mowing, gyms, Gardening, gyms, test and tag. Gyms is hardly anything. <laughs> hardly anything like coin laundries. Literally, I spent while I was doing academic research, you know, and uh, prior to that, I would like I would talk to people, try to learn, you know, engage, you know, what I should do. If it's pizza, businesses, burgers, you know. Just think of it. You know, I spoke to almost everyone. And one thing I should highlight in this kind of episode, mentoring. That has always, you know, saved me in my life. Mentor, career mentor, you know, you can say business mentor, you know, coaching. So I had my first mentor I had was at Victoria University, career mentor. Even before that, I had someone who would voluntarily mentor me, career mentor. So, Suzanne, I think I should acknowledge her. She has really been, uh, you know, a very important person in my life. Uh, so, Suzanne really helped, looked into my resume, cover letter, kind of, and Vishal Sasdeva groomed me on the interview techniques. And... Uh, so all these people are really important important in my life. Uh, even right now for my business, I have a business mentor. So so I just, you know, when you reflect, you know, think with a clear mind, you get solutions in life. You know, we, we all need gurus, you know, coaches, mentors, you know, and they guide us. Uh, you know, it actually comes from a story as well, you know, uh, during ancient times, there were kings, and even king used to have an advisor. So, and therefore, I think you know we don't know everything. We can always go around and ask people, you know, seek a mentor. So, Suzanne, my mentor, I wrote to her. I said, Suzanne, I I'm, I'm want to do a business. I gave her. I think it was a kebab shop. I said, Suzanne, uh, look, this kebab shop, I think, uh, middle of lockdown pandemic, and he was selling, can't remember, $35,000. And I said, uh, Suzanne, please advise. And she very, as usual, sent me an email with two, three bullet points. Said, Ritesh, go and inspect the kebab shop, but also ask people around that shop about the kebab shop. Like, is it busy? Do you see customers over there? Um, and one very important thing Suzanne said to me was, if you're buying a business, you have to work in that business or else you're just paying, you know, people's salaries. I think that was a very, very helpful kind of advice, you know, Suzanne gave me. That is when I stopped, you know, like, okay, James mowing, James gardening, test and tag, coin laundry. I mean, coin laundry was always there, but I was like, okay. Then I said to myself, okay, is there a franchise in real estate? 
and then I came across a buyer's agent's franchise. And you're like connecting the dots, you know, like, you know, what is that, you know, ducks were lining up. Uh, and uh, I said, okay, buyer's agents, okay. And dude, I just, I came to know about this during my research because the re core of my research is using blockchain and, you know, advanced technologies and how it can save time and money. Uh, you know, yes, they're intermediaries, but what happens is intermediaries are possibly going to stay, but what will happen is technologies will help us save time, even to some extent money. Uh, and that is when I, you know, kind of read about a buyer's agent profession. And again, I said, okay, well, I don't need any kind of, I mean, I just said, okay, let me spend time. I mean, I was being asked to pay, you know, ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 to get a buyer agent franchise. And I said to myself, really, do I need to spend that money? Let me spend some time and figure out how it is done. And that's it, you know, just talking to people and browsing few websites. And one very important thing happened to me was I went for a business mentoring program like business Victoria has has affiliations uh, like business foundations. And what happens is they offer a end-to-end -end kind of support for new businesses. So I was eligible for this mentoring and wherein I met a trainer who literally kind of uh, took me through like a writing a business plan. So it was around like nine classes, eight or nine classes. Uh, almost one full day classes, so nine full day classes. And wherein I was literally, I sat down with her, like there were other students, and we all uh, wrote the full fledged business plan with all the financials for the next two years. And I think that was so helpful for me to kind of launch my business. I literally kind of trained myself, you know, to uh, kind of build my own website. You know, the email signature, the social media pages, everything, you know, I learned myself. Uh, and, uh, right, the business plan, the vision, the mission, product, price, place, promotion, the four P's. So, yes, I think to summarize, I would say you need to have a passion. You need to have that dedication. Uh, and I can do it that kind of attitude and, you know, giving your 1000%, I should say, 100% is no longer the standard. It's like, you know, 10 times, you know, you need to give your 1000%. Absolutely. You know, too much. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And um, yeah, thank you so much for that. Now, you, you've done all of this and you bring such a wealth of experience, knowledge, dedication, passion, and all those uh, things to, um, you know, nest or invest. So what, what is it then that sets nest or invest buyers agents apart from any other buyers agent services out there? Few things come to my mind, like independent and ex. Exclusivity is very important. You will see uh, there are other agencies, they would say they are buyers agents, but essentially like they are selling properties, uh, literally like they have some sort of maybe partnership with certain builders or developers. They get some sort of maybe kickbacks. It could be any amount. So you feel like they are kind of buyers. If you ask around, you know, independent buyers agents around the country, you would get different numbers, but it would be fair to say they're like between fifteen hundred to three thousand dollar independent buyers agents in Australia. Compare this to the real estate sales agent, about a hundred thirty, one hundred thirty thousand real estate sales agents. So you can see such a big difference. Again, put this into perspective, on average around, uh, say average, 500,000 properties are sold in Australia. You know, certain, some, you know, certain year you will see 400,000, you know, another year you will see 600,000. So average 500. 
So now look at this, 500,000 properties sold, around 130,000 real estate agents. Let's take 3,000 buyers agents. You can see such a big difference and potential and scope. So the, so the thing is, and again, let me tell you one, just one thing. If you go to the US, buyers agents are mainstream. It would be fair to say, you know, there is about like 5% commission. 2.5% uh, is charged by the buyer agent, 2.5% by the seller agent. It's kind of everyone in the US knows this. In the in Australia, it is kind of getting there, you know, going main, like th that the noise is increasing, the awareness is increasing. And in Australia, it started about 20 years ago, you know, this buyer's agent concept. Uh, and the whole idea is people have to understand buyer works, buyer's agent work for buyers. Selling agent works for sellers. Two, you know, different scenarios. Seller pays the selling agent. Buyer pays the buyer's agent. So it's very, you know, clean and clear equation or relationship. And the thing is, like in my case, I have the estate agent license for Victoria and Queensland. So I'm really not kind of, you know, logged into a certain jurisdiction like a suburb. You know, like if someone wants to invest, say, for example, they want to invest $300,000, you know, in a growing suburb or pocket, you know, it would be. And if they want to buy a house, you know, three hundred thousand investment, say four hundred dollars per week rent, you know, a newer property, it's it's it's, it's a you know difficult to kind of find in uh, say Victoria. So then I say you can buy something for them in Queensland. Right. It's a growing you know say for example North Queensland. Yep. So what I'm trying to tell you is like. about giving objective advice you know what happens in investment property investment spaces uh, many times people follow what their friends family are doing like recently i met a client who was uh, looking to buy in uh, melton uh, five hundred thousand dollar budget and i quickly looked at the numbers i said okay five hundred thousand investment all you will get is like four hundred dollars rent per week what if I was able to buy something for you in like $400,000, $500 rent per week? His eyes were like, no, are you serious? I said, yes, I'm serious. And I said, you know, I can get something for you in Queensland, you know? And it was like, I never thought like this. I always just would thought, think like, okay, you know, and he, I think he, yeah, like I was always, he was always looking around in Victoria. So I said, it's just a different perspective of looking, of looking at things, you know, going interstate. So yeah, just educating, I think educating is very important and that is my approach. When someone comes to me, I said, look, like I'm not selling anything. I'm nothing to sell. You know, investing is an art, it's in science. And I will tell you everything I know. I'm, when you come to me, you become like a family. And it's a long-term relationship, professional relationship, you know. I want to give my best. And it's your money, you know. So I have to behave responsibly. I'm accountable for your investment. So that is why I will do everything to the best of my ability to make sure your investment is safe and it grows. Uh, yeah, so these are some of the things, you know, I would like to, and yeah, so, uh, and I, you know, the, the way I look at this, you know, mentoring, and someone comes to me like a, like a bit, like you said, you know, property guru, like property mentor, training them, coaching them, educating them, how investment works, how the market, be, well, market thinks, how the seller thinks, how the buyer thinks. So, you know, I spend a lot of time kind of explaining to them 
why we are doing this and you know that's it you know unless they become like comfortable and confident i really don't even kind of take them on board you know i say take your time when they are ready come to me i will buy a property for you so i give them space and time to make a decision fantastic yeah. and thank you so much for that now you mentioned something that is very crucial especially when it comes to real estate investment you know there's always those people that talk at a barbecue that auntie that brother that knows something about property <laughs> and is always giving that wrong advice and good on you for helping that client who was about to buy in Melton and they were actually going to lose out in their investment um you know decision there and you really are bullish and you really are strong on the whole mentoring aspect of um you know you know helping other people find you know suitable properties that are investment grade that they can utilize i also read a statistic that says that very few people in australia go past you know investment property number 1 and very very few of those go past investment property number 2 it's only probably the 1% that go up to the fifth um you know property what sort of advice do you have for individuals that are looking to invest in property for the first time uh start small baby steps like you know let me give put this into perspective recently we are hearing you know that uh you know rba has been increasing the rate of interest you know regularly since last 15 months uh from 2% you know to 6% and for how you know people who bought investment properties at 2% are possibly under mortgage stress and would kind of list the property on the market so it's very important to uh, start small like for example if they are buying a 300000 a 400000 property positive cash flow meaning like it's kind of uh, like i said per year for example if it is say about $1000 positive cash flow then they are able to hold that property as an example and that is very important property like historically property prices doubles in australia it varies you know according to the location uh, but 7 years 10 years 12 years property price will double so what it means if it is growing you know at about 7% per year it will double your money will double and uh, so if and ideally an investor should be able to hold the property for one property cycle whatever 7 to 10 years and for that to happen if they invest in these 300 400000 dollar properties they would be able to hold it because you know and that is when they will be able to have a portfolio of properties the whole idea is why they are investing do they want to have a portfolio of properties you know what and do they want to replace their income with passive income from properties so that is why starting small investing in these 3 400000 properties is a better choice so that they can hold and what is one more theory first home buyers you know 600 in victoria you know 600000 is the you know the is the general you know in figure that they look for like because after 600000 dollars they have to pay stamp duty first home buyers so if they buy a property at 600000 or under they pay zero stamp duty so that is why that is always you know that psychological figure that they look for so what i'm trying to say is if you buy a property say between 3 and 400000 there are lots of buyers for that like 3 to 600000 first home buyers investors anyone everyone downsizers upsizers 
So what I'm trying to say, there's a lot of competition. There's a lot of demand for that. And that is why that price point will always grow. Affordability. So that is kind of, you know, my theory that low risk and being able to hold. And that is why it's, it's important to kind of find properties with high rental yield. You know, uh, 5%, 6%, 7%. The, and then there are a lot of things, you know, like there is also this, uh, you know, it's, investing is very academic. It's very technical. It's not like, okay, my friend is investing in Perth and you go and invest in Perth. It doesn't work that way. It, it should not be like that. If you have to, you know, get a professional, you know, like buyers agent, uh, you know, who really works for you. You know, you do, it helps, you know, a buyer by negotiating, you know. They, the first thing is, you know, they, as a minimum, you know, whatever the fees they pay, as a minimum, they save that upfront. But on average, they save more, you know, by in terms of they're getting good advice, you know, that perspective on the layout of the property you know like for example if there is a property like this morning i got a phone call from an agent and uh about uh, buying a property and the property doesn't have a built-in rope and i know that could be one reason it's not selling but you know people can buy you know spend 200 300 dollars and buy something from the furniture sort of store and you know, a wardrobe or Almira or just put it in that room. So it's a very easy solution. So it just comes with experience that, yep, buy, you know, like, yeah, if properties have, unless, you know, the property has a major structural issue, and then it's okay, it's okay to go ahead with a certain property. And it all comes with experience. You know, the last 10 years, I've, I've even built three houses for myself. So I, I can, you know, educate people on off the plan, you know, how to choose the builder. And uh, that is why, you know, the kind of perspective I bring is yeah, very helpful for that. And I'm always genuine. And uh, I just feel like, you know, it's my money in that, you know, I am investing. It's, you know, like, as if like I'm investing in that property for the buyer. That is the way I think. So unless I am fully convinced, like, no, this is a good investment. It will hold its value. It will grow. It's a lot of, you know, academics as well, like the, what are the, you know, socioeconomic profile of that suburb? You know, if, the, if, if uh, you know, a, a better socioeconomic profile would mean, you know, tenants with good job, good con stable income, you know, education, you know, like professionals. So there's a lot of, you know, things you have to consider when buying a property. It's not like, yeah, my friend is buying, I will also buy. So a lot of fact check needs to be done before you buy a property. Yeah. Fantastic. And considering there's a lot that needs to be done and it will be too much work for somebody who's not doing transactions like that every single day, what would be the best way uh, retest for people to get in touch with you so they can actually start, um, you know, enjoying the benefits of working with an accomplished buyer's agent like yourself. Easy, you know, uh, they can reach me. Uh, I have a website, www.nestorinvest.au. They can reach me through my website. I have social media pages. They can find me on Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, you know, my number, mobile number, easy, zero four double three double eight double three eight nine. A lot of ways they can contact me. My office is in the city, uh, Melbourne CBD. They can meet me uh, there, K28 Swanston Street, Melbourne. So there are many ways, phone, office, email, website, you can submit web, uh, inquiry to the website, whatever is convenient for them, they can reach me. Absolutely. I'll make sure all that information is available in the show notes uh, at the bottom. Now, obviously, Ritesh, you know, this this has been a fantastic, um, you know, episode. You've really given us a lot of information and we know now where you have been 
um, you know, from the time you were born to the time you went through all these different jobs, the whole 22 years, uh, you know, of your career span and now what it is that you're doing to make a significant difference to those people that are willing to invest and buy properties in and around uh, Melbourne and the Queensland areas in Australia. Now, somebody could be watching this and saying, I'm really excited to jump on board, um, you know, with these guys at Nest and Invest. What can people expect, um, you know, from you now that, um, you know, AI is coming and this is your realm, this is what you're studying. What can we expect in the future? Uh, maybe the next time we have an opportunity to have a chat with you. Uh, like... See, uh, last two and a half years itself, since I, since I kind of started researching in real estate, things have really uh, changed already uh, due to lockdowns. You know, we, agents were unable to sell properties. So 3D tour of the property was adopted, virtual tours. Online auctions uh, were adopted by the industry. So uh, contracts went uh, online. You know, we use DocuSign these days to sign contracts. So technologies have fast-tracked adoption in real estate industry in Australia. Uh, during my research, I, you know, a lot of things I learned. One thing I now remember of all the countries in the world, Australian real estate is like the rank 11th in terms of the uh, online uh, capabilities. You know, the land titles registry, uh, the settlement system, PEXA. You know, everything we see is one of the best in the world. There is already this... Uh, being done on blockchain adoption in real estate. Contracts are on blockchain. Like there's a company called Hutley, an Australian company based in Queensland. Uh, they have partnered with REIB. And uh, so they are and already have, you know, been working in the background. Like the so contracts are on blockchain. And you, with time, you will see things changing. Uh, you know, AI big data is also is already being used. In the way I source information, like core logic, RP data, it's AI, big data. You know, millions and billions of you know data points are analyzed and you know presented to us in the form of core logic reports, valuation, rental appraisals. Um, you know, I use a, a subscription uh, wherein if I just have to input the number, you know, say four hundred thousand investment. It will spit out, you know, which suburbs are good to invest, which have good high rental yield, low vacancy rate, uh, you know, high buyer search index, you know, low risk. So AI big data is being used in real estate already. And give it time, you know, three years, five years, ten years, you will have blockchain, you know, like is being used in real estate. It's just a matter of time, you know, where, you know, governments kind of, you know, set up policy procedures, you know, legislation in place, you know, like, you know, how to protect the consumer and do the things right way. Fantastic. And I know our clients and uh, your clients are going to be in the safest of hands because you are already, um, you know, all over those technologies and they would definitely have the best advocate for their uh, buying decisions. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our interview with Ritesh, the Australian property guru, as you have discovered, and um, the founder of Nest or Invest Buyers Agents. Ritesh, thank you so much, um, you know, for the time we've spent together on the show today. Now, thank you uh, for uh, inviting me uh, for the in in interview. Uh, it's always uh, Pleasure talking to you and you yourself are an inspiration for me, to be honest. 
<laughs> Fantastic. Well, as you um, have heard, Rita's journey uh, from arriving in Melbourne to becoming a successful buyer's agent is also truly inspiring. I really value, um, you know, your dedication, your energy, your education, and also your genuine personality and commitment to actually helping others. Um, and I think that's the reason why you've become the most trusted advisor in the real estate industry. So thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your expertise. And for those that are watching right now, if you want to learn more about Retesh and Nestle Invest uh, Buyers Agents, be sure to visit their website. I will put all that information in the show notes below. And for those that are watching right now, thank you so much for tuning in to the Online Prosperity Show. And remember, um, you know, the right property at the right price can be the key to your financial prosperity. Until next time, Take care of yourself and keep prospering. Bye for now.